Hello, and welcome to Phil Talking D20. Uh, so firstly, I want to say a big thanks to uh, subscribers uh, and the viewers that have been brought to the channel by my last video, uh, where I talked about the ancestries and backgrounds in the Advanced Players Guide that's just come out for Pathfinder 2. So super stoked about that. Really appreciate that, guys. That's awesome. Um, today's video... I'm going to do um, a bit of a, a deep dive into the four new classes uh, that have been brought to the table by the Advanced Players Guide. I was going to try and do classes and the archetypes, but there's a lot, a lot of good stuff in here. And I'm not doing it service if I do that. So this video is the four new classes, Investigator, Oracle, uh, Swashbuckler, and which and uh, in the next video i'm going to touch stone on the uh, big pool of feats that have been added to all the core classes which again is awesome and then the one after that will be archetypes so bear with me um we're going to get there but like i said i don't want to do it a disservice and i think a lot of people are probably most excited by four new classes because this book is all about you as a player enriching and expanding your experience at the table uh, and it does a brilliant job of that so congrats Paizo it's a belter I'm really 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 excited by this book it's a really good book um, and it's really nice to see that they're really getting kind of content out there that's really good quality on a, on a really steady regular basis which again is brilliant work so we're going to start with the investigator because I'm going to go through them in order. It goes investigator, oracle, swashbuckler, witch, and that's the order I'm going to do them in. Um, so what is the investigator? Um, it's Robert Downey Jr.'s Sherlock Holmes, I think is a, a really good way of describing it. Um, it, it focuses on brains over brawn, um, but it's not, again, this is something that's unique to Pathfinder 2. It's not explicitly skills focused your rubbish at everything else and it's not explicitly combat focused your rubbish at everything else it's a really good blending of the two kind of elements uh, and it has some really cool unique abilities um, ones that are focused on uh, granting you as a player um, advantages in combat because you've used strategy and your smarts to gain an advantage over an opponent um, these enable you to use your intelligence on uh, damage uh, and add uh, um, like effectively sneak attack, uh, but they call precision damage uh, to certain attacks when you have kind of pre-planned by using actions. Um, so you've got these unique abilities uh, that, that kind of gear you up to that. Um, some of the features in the class that are really, really cool um, are the, the way that you choose like a path. So you're an investigator, but then you have these different paths. So there's like um, alchemist, where you gain some elements of the uh, alchemist class to make potions um, and and kind of, you know, tinctures and elixirs and things to, to kind of buff you and help you achieve your objectives. Um, there's one called forensic medicine that grants you uh, the medicine skill and battle medic. Uh, so you can have a slight healing element uh, but also leads into the combat trees that give you bleed damage on successful certain successful attacks um, because you know about anatomy. So you can see how there's this good kind of um, transition of not only a focus on, on skill uh, and skill-based kind of uh, elements of the game, but also how that subtly draws across with the right, the right feet picks into combat, which is superb. Um, Another cool about forensics is it enables you to use battle medic uh, once every hour instead of once a day because you're using your brain and you're using the power of science and uh, to kind of, you know, to kind of confront medicine as opposed to uh, perhaps using kind of, you know, um, poultices and, and maybe a more kind of traditional quote unquote medieval view of medicine, which I think is fab. Um, so, yeah, there's some cool stuff in there. Um, Another kind of ability chain you have is, is very much focused on pre-planning. So what you do is, uh, to kind of, I suppose, give an example of how it might work, um, you're traveling through the wilderness and you come across a caravan that's been attacked and you start making skill techs and you say, I'm going to make 
um, this one of my investigations. I'm going to investigate who and what did this, and then I'm going to look for leads. You do your perception check, you find some uh, footprints that may be of the combatants, um, you gain a bonus on those checks, uh, and then you are it's effectively enabling this, this kind of path that's, that's buffing you towards that end objective, uh, which is um, effectively uh, gaining uh, bonuses on skill checks, being able to kind of grant other people bonuses on skill checks if perhaps you don't have a relevant skill that's useful but someone else in the party or an NPC that's helping you does, so you can give them a little buff to help you kind of pursue your lead. And what that enables is as you're kind of progressing, you get to a point where you're then getting into a combat scenario and you can then do this thing, which is very cool, where you can effectively pre-roll a dice and save it. So if it's a good roll, and you hope it is, you've got this banked good roll because you've kind of had that moment where he, you know, the, 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 the again, back to the Sherlock Holmes reference, where he does that slow motion, he's going to do this, he's going to do that, he's going to do this, and I'm going to do that and counter and do this attack to debilitate him. That kind of a vibe. So you can effectively kind of go, right, I'm going to use my banked roll from, you know, just before combat and throw it in now on this attack. So it's a gimme because I know it's a good roll. But then you're also getting to add your intelligence modifier instead of perhaps strength or dex. So you don't have to favor a combat stat to still do good damage. And it also grants you this precision damage of an extra D6 that, again, increases as you level up. So you get this kind of sudden hard impact from you pre-planning and successfully assessing and understanding a foe. Other useful abilities the class gets is the ability to um, make an attack, and if you're successful, immediately make a free action recall knowledge using one of your other skills to get you know information on what type of monster is it? Does it have weaknesses? You know, those those kind of like recall knowledges where we're, we're looking at a monster and we're going, all right, does it have damage reduction or does it have a resistance or a weakness? You can just go, I've made an attack, bam, now I can know something about it because suddenly I've had this moment of recall where I've been like, aha, I faced these before or I read a tome about this particular monster. So you could really kind of amp up your own performance but also, you know, support the party really well um, because... You're not a primary combatant, you're not the fighter, you're not the barbarian, you're not the champion, um, but you, you, you're a very good and capable um, combat support role and also a powerful social encounter kind of, I suppose, combatant in a way. Um, you know, so I think a lot of people are going to really like this class. I think there's some really cool stuff in here and it's, it's unique. It's not alien you know, there's not suddenly a swathe of new terms and rules uh, that are going to throw us off and make us kind of think, oh, hang on, this is so different. I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing with it. What they've done with all of these classes is a really good job of reflavoring and using existing kind of concepts to, to help us understand how we're structuring and building our class and then moving it forward in unique ways, which is really, really good work. So yeah, I uh, I definitely like this class. I think it's uh, it's a, it's a good one. Um, I suppose let's have a quick look at um, some feats just to give you an idea. Uh, a level one feat. I always look at low level feats because they're your bedrock, and it's giving you I suppose the the quickest insight as to what you're going to be looking at as a player because we all mostly start at level one. How many people start a campaign at level fifty? No one. Well, mad people. Um, <laughs> Trap finder, level one feet, bam. You don't need a rogue, you've got an investigator. You, you see how you can branch out with this class um, so that you don't have to have, I suppose, what is um, often a, a very stereotypical traditional baked in back it from the days of first edition of, oh, I have a fighter, a, a wizard and a rogue, which is that kind of core cool makeup. What this is enabling us to do is have um, a different angle. So if we, we, if we haven't got a rogue in the party, it doesn't matter. We've got Sherlock Holmes, aka the investigator. Um, known weakness, whenever you uh, devise a stratagem, which is an action, 
Uh, you can also attempt a check to recall knowledge as part of that action. If you critically succeed at the recall knowledge check, uh, you notice a weakness and get a plus one circumstance bonus uh, on your attack roll. Um, so again, you can see how they've done a clever job of of empowering the class with its feats and again, focusing on um, kind of moving it forward. Um, there's another one uh, that's level two that's called Athletic Strategist. You can see how they've kind of geared this kind of class up. Uh, Takedown Expert, level one. Uh, you've mastered combat practices that let you get up close and bring down perpetrators alive. Again, this brilliant concept of you're an investigator. You're probably not going to be gearing up to go, um, you know, murder hoboing everything you encounter. So we're helping and assisting you in, in you know, in you know, bringing in people alive so they can be questioned. And spoiler alert for um, obviously kind of archetypes coming up in a later video. There's an archetype called bounty hunter. So if you take that archetype for bounty hunter and bolt it into investigator you can really kind of crunch into uh, a really high geared, very focused um, kind of track down, target, locate, successfully combat, defeat, and draw back to the powers that be alive, your targets that you're kind of hunting down for good or ill, which you can see how there's this wonderful meta that's, that's kind of baked into this book from the ground up. Um, yeah, very cool. So, Hopefully that's given you a bit of a vibe for um, what you can do as an investigator, uh, because like I said, definitely a, uh, definitely a good class. Now, moving forward, we're going to go to the Oracle, because it's next in the list. Easy. Now, Oracle, um, another very cool class. Uh, it's a, it's a, a spellcasting-focused class, uh, but it, and, it, and it has some similar familiar elements that are kind of akin to bloodlines and things like that. So we, again, have an understanding of the structure that we're looking at, uh, but it has this wonderful, unique element to it, which is the curse. So effectively, they're using focus spells um, and they're calling them revelations. And you've, you've got an existing spell pool and cantrips and all that kind of normal good stuff. But you're not drawing your power directly from a deity. So you don't call on Bob, the god of biscuits, to give you the power of biscuit magic. Um, what you're doing is you're looking at a kind of concept and these are referred to uh, as mysteries. Um, the mysteries are as follows. The ancestors, uh, battle, uh, bones, slightly macabre, um, the cosmos. You draw your power from the mysteries of the cosmos. Uh, flames, life, law and tempest. And like I said, this is... Um, like an esoterical concept. It's not a direct entity. It might be a group of entities. It might be, um, you know, a, a, you know, a, a fey kind of court. It could be any number of things. And they do, again, a brilliant job of, of kind of delving into the role play elements and opportunities and the story elements and opportunities that you can create with your DM to kind of, I suppose, flavor out the experience at the table, which is really, really cool. Uh, and I think what these advanced classes do really well, they give, they present you with these opportunities to to kind of create more at the table um, out of mechanics that are in the, the class and the rules, which is super work. Um, like I said, this is the advanced player's guide. So if you're like, I've never played Pathfinder before, Phil, I'll play an Oracle. It, it could be, it could, well, that's not true. Not, you've never played Pathfinder before. You've never played an RPG, a tabletop RPG before. These are slightly more complicated than going, I tell you what, I'll play a human fighter, um, which is a, a really solid entry point, believe me. Um, so they're not, they're not impossibly complicated though. Don't panic. Uh, it's just, they are more complex than a lot of other classes. Uh, but for, for, for good reason, because it's added value, complexity. It's not um, worthless complexity, which is important uh, to kind of state, because I don't want people being like, oh, if they're just really annoying and awkward to play, why would I bother buying the book? Um, so, you know, don't don't be put off. Um, you know, do do look at look at them and take them seriously and think about getting stuck into them. So Oracle um has the most important, I suppose the most important element of Oracle is the curse. 
um, with great power be uh, becomes this great burden that, that actively pushes back against you as a player. Um, so it doesn't cripple and destroy you. It's not like, um, and it's no worse than playing um, a low level spellcaster uh, in any other system. It's not like it is literally like, oh, you've used four spells for the day. Your character is dead. It's not that stupid. What it does is it gives you these wonderful kind of flavoursome kind of little mechanics that just push back against you and curve your ability to keep dumping powerful magic uh, because the kind of the gamut of this class is, is it's got its normal pool of spells, but it also has these revelations, these slightly more dynamic, slightly powerful, slightly cooler focus spells um, that you can kind of keep using, but the more you use them, the, the strength of the curse grows and it starts off low key the ancestors one basically uh what it does is it, it, it when you're um getting into combat and you start using revelation spells the curse starts to take hold you roll a dice and then that gives you a particular ancestral spirit that has a particular focus such as maybe combat or certain skills or certain magic um and then that takes the lead role and starts to kind of cloud your psyche. And it's easier to do the things that it wants you to do, but it's harder to do other things. So basically they're kind of putting this kind of this bonus in one end, but a slight penalty and, and, and kind of kind of pushback on other elements, which is really funky and I really, really like. So yeah, definitely well worth a look, Oracle. Uh, there's some cool stuff in here. Uh, the battle one, for example, gives you martial weapons proficiency and medium and heavy armor proficiencies. So you can be a bit of a, a tank caster, uh, which again is funky. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, definitely recommend this one as, as something to kind of get stuck into. If you really want to play a, a new kind of caster, this and the witch are very, very cool. So yeah, definitely a funky class. Uh, let's just have a quick dabble in a couple of feats just to give you, I suppose, a, a flavor flave. Uh, of 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 what kind of uh, dabblings in magic this has, um, ding 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 ding. Let me find some. Oh, there's so much stuff in here. It's again, it's a bit like the bloodline section of the sorcerer. There's all these different groups and entities that all grant these different bonuses that grow and develop as you level up and further develop with feet picks if you wish. Um, so um, widen spell and reach spell are there to kind of buff your magic from the uh, from the get go as low level spells. Um, you know, adding more cantrips is is, is an option. Um, let's have a quick look. Um, Bispell weapon uh, enables you to um, again a fourth level feat uh, enables you to um, essentially uh, siphon the residual energy from the last spell you cast into one of your weapons you're wielding, and it deals an extra d6 damage. Uh, based on the type of, of spell damage it was. So if it was like um, electric bolt, it would be a D6 in electrical. So you've got these kind of payoff feats that kind of, again, keep you combat capable, which is lovely, because right? I'm always keen for, for, uh, for other classes to get their share of the limelight when it comes to combat. You know, the old ways of being a sorcerer who at low levels had a couple of spells and then basically just ran around trying not to die wasn't fun for anybody. Um, so they've done a great job of, of, of keeping these guys relevant uh, when they've burned out on spells or burned so much kind of power out of the curse that now they're really having to kind of not draw on their magical power because the burden of the curse has become too great. Um, but yeah, funky. Um, definitely, definitely a good one. Um, now, Swashbuckler, um, very combat focused, um, you know, 10 hit points, um, you know, per, per level plus con. So you can tell you're already kind of a fighter, but you're more of, um, you're more of a finesse grace kind of fighter. You've got that focus on finesse weapons and dexterity and kind of Errol Flynn kind of swashbuckling era. <clears throat> kind of, I suppose, tagline to it. The the thing that makes um, Swashbuckler tick is Panache. And again, it has various schools um, that uh, are kind of focus channels uh, for how you gain Panache. They can be things like um, a diplomacy check to disarm, not 
physically disarm, but kind of throw off an opponent or a, um, and, and, and again, that then, if you're successful, gives you panache. And then panache gives you bonuses to damage. Uh, there's other ones that are uh, focused on acrobatics and doing things like tumble through um, to kind of take risk to gain panache. And if you're successful, you get this damage buff. Um, that then opens up what they call finishers, which are basically a chunk of extra damage. Uh, kind of a bit like sneak attack, but kind of rarer. You don't get it as reliably because once you've used a finisher and you get this extra 2d6 damage, your panache day ends and you have to re-earn panache by taking risks or successfully doing checks to kind of throw your opponents off in some way to get the advantage back in combat. Um, so yeah, um, it's got some cool strat strategy elements to it in terms of when you're gonna pop off your abilities, how you're gonna combine those because uh, the wit school of of being a swashbuckler where you're using your diplomacy to kind of make kind of you know witty kind of comments that that annoy or frustrate or, or or kind of surprise your opponent can also give them penalties not only to their armor class in the form of things like flat-footed that we often see thrown out as as debilitators to your opponents but it also puts penalties on their will save which if you've got a caster in the party who's going to hit them with a spell that requires a will save for them to pass to kind of negate you can already see how this this wonderful kind of combat meta of how the kind of the classes fluidly relate to each other works really really well so yeah again this is another cool class where you've got a little bit more um focus on uh on i suppose thinking through how you're going to gain panache to get your advantage to get your your abilities and your your kind of your damage amped up against opponents um so yeah there's some cool stuff in here um let's have a quick gander um that's some skill feats just so you can get some vibes of those because they're always a good place to go um and then there's a lot of content in this class like there is the other classes so i don't want to kind of try and cover every single specific ability i just want to kind of touchstone what makes them unique um level one feet buckler expertise Instead of it being a plus one to your AC, it's a plus two to your AC for using a buckler when you raise um, when you raise a weapon. Or you can take dueling parry, um, where you've got a single one-handed melee weapon, um, and you gain a plus two circumstance for your AC because you've got a really good kind of flourishing, you know, whirling blade that is able to turn blows aside. Um, so yeah, there's some cool little kind of flavor feats that are, are and they're low level. Plus two AC at low level, level one, is pretty tasty. Um, nimble dodge as a reaction. That's a reaction that grants you the ability to um, increase your your armor class. The core one is if someone critically misses you, you get to make an attack uh, as your core reaction, which I quite like. I think that's quite funky. Um, yeah, there's some good stuff in um, uh, in here for for kind of you know having this. This, uh, you know, witty, daring, do, rope swinging, chandelier grabbing, uh, kind of drink, kind of tossing, um, you know, what, swashbuckler. Um, yeah, very cool class. Uh, definitely well worth a look. Um, and, a, a, and a really good way of, of, of being a combat character that's just a little bit different, which is lovely. And again... Um, with all the archetypes and all the ancestral options and all that kind of good stuff, there's layers that you can add to it. So with all these classes and all the core cool classes, you're not re rinse repeating. You've got so much variation in, in ancestry and in feat selections, both within classes and within ancestries and within the skill uh, feats pool, that you can really build unique classes, which is, which is really, really cool. So hopefully that's given you a bit of a vibe for the the daring do swashbuckler and their I suppose their their the, the kind of the key concepts of of that particular class. So let's move on to the witch, another spellcaster. Um, the, the thing that um, I really like about witch is there's a good focus on um, again a bit like with the oracle this mysterious kind of source of your magic which has got this rich kind of role play kind of world building vibe to it where you and the GM can um, can start to kind of draw out this new narrative uh, because you have a mysterious patron um, that has a, a kind of a vibe to it. 
which is things like um, shadows or winter, these kind of broad stroke kind of um, terms, because it's a mystery to you. You don't know who your patron is and you don't know why they're granting you magic. Um, the other really nice element to uh, which is familiars. The familiar is a big deal in which it's like a focus of the, the class. They, other classes have familiars, but in this they've really kind of pushed in harder and made it more of a big deal so that it's more engaging. It's, it's, it's almost like a combination of familiar and animal companion in terms of how it amps up and it becomes a reservoir for your spells but it's also the person that imparts the lessons and the teachings and the secrets of your mysterious patron to you. So again there's this cool role play element to that and the artwork's really evocative. You've got this kind of mysterious kind of elven looking witch and she's got this brilliant kind of white fox with like five tails and these cool like red eyebrows and stuff. It's it's super funky. You can tell it's mysterious and, and a mystical beast that's accompanying her. Um, which is, again, a, uh, a bit like oracles, make a bit more use of focus spells, and they call them hexes. And they're kind of like um, slightly more powerful cantrips um, that are per encounter, because you have to regen your focus ball with a 10-minute rest, versus cantrips that are... A kind of steady climb, keep re repeatedly using them kind of regardless. Um, so they make, a, again, a bit more use of hexes, uh, or focus spells, I should say, uh, but they refer to them as hexes, uh, for these quick-fire, kind of high-impact, short-lived kind of boom-bang effects that debilitate um, your opponents to assist you in the party in defeating them, which is cool. Um, so, yeah, again, this is a, another good another well-flavoured class that's got these rich kind of role-play elements baked in as, a, as an experience and as a concept, which, I, again, I really, really appreciate. Um, I think that's definitely something that, that's, that's very good. Um, things that, I, that jumped out to me that I thought were really fun in the feet section, there's one that's called, um, I think it's like Witch's Nails or Talons or something. Uh, it's one called Cauldron. Um, Let's have a quick look. Yeah, reach and widen spells. The classic kind of caster feats are in there. Um, blah, 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 blah. Conceal spell. No. Oh, where's it gone? It's brilliant. Living hair. That's a fun one. Your hair becomes kind of wild and witchy and can do stuff. Uh, Eldritch nails. So basically, it's a level four feet. You grow talons. These these kind of uh, kind of big witchy kind of fingernails, and uh, you get basically a d6 slashing weapon. Uh, with these natural claws uh, but you can etch runes on them and they can become magical so you can have literally kind of flaming death witch nails that you can seriously mess people up and again another great example of how we can have a casting class that has this rich depth of of of, of unique uses of existing rules for spells um, that can also get stuck in in a fight and not be left standing on the sidelines once their spells have burned out. Which, yeah, like I said, take note other gaming systems, <coughs> D&D, &D, uh, because this needs to be in. You, you, The experience, everyone wants to be involved in the experience, and the more barriers you put in the way of classes that don't let them take part at certain points, or let them take part so pitifully that it's just not fun, isn't fun for anybody, no one wants that. So this is another really good example of how you're never going to be the fighter uh, when you play a witch, uh, although with the right build you can still be competent and very capable and not be left completely lagging in the sidelines going, oh, I'm completely useless. Um, so again, yeah, there's some good stuff in here. I think it's um, in terms of how they've created these four new classes, several of which they've brought forward from Pathfinder 1, They've done a really good job of, 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 of getting them new, unique uh, kind of places in the, in the core system, uh, giving us new opportunities that are really great, but also given us this, these kind of very rich um, role play hooked experiences where these, these things are going to kind of grow. Because again, like they do with the Oracle, the witch's kind of mysterious patron, uh, there's a good kind of um, grounding in how much do you know and how much do you want to know and 
you know, why are they giving you your power? And you probably won't ever find out, but there's this wonderful kind of opportunity to kind of chase down that rabbit hole um, to try and kind of find out why you've been chosen, why this patron has chosen you. Um, let's just have a quick look at one of those um, just so we can give you a, a, a bit of an insight into that. So which patron theme do we fancy? I quite like the sound of winter. So let's see why winter is a patron. Um, let's have a look. Patron themes, which lessons? Dum, 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 dum. God, there's a lot in this. There's a lot of content in here, it's mad. Um, they talk about, um, it's all broad terms. I think they, they don't give you the exact specifics. It's it's more of a guide into um, why, <clears throat> yeah, your patron reflects the frozen reaches of the world, bitterly, uh, bitterly cruel to those who underestimate that power. Um, wonderful little evocative tagline. Um, and then much like a bloodline, it's uh, your spell list, which is primal. Uh, so you're a primal magic caster. Your patron skill, it's granted to you as nature. Uh, you get the hex cantrip clinging ice, and then you get the uh, granted spell gust of wind. So you can see how they're familiar concepts, but they they put this kind of unique angle on them. And then it's like, well, is it um, the spirit of um, a, you know a powerful frost giant that's somehow kind of settled upon you as a focus for its power, or um, is there a powerful kind of you know uh, w uh, ice elemental that's that's kind of chosen to kind of grant you some of its power? You can see how there's these kind of, you know, rabbit holes of, of what, where and why uh, baked into the class. Um, so, yeah, um, all four core classes they've added um, are, are brilliantly um, kind of rendered. Um, they're definitely all well worth a good kind of trawl through. Don't be scared to, to kind of dive in and try them. But I think you just need to be um, prepared. Do you know what I mean? You, you need to kind of. Make sure you you've you've had a good read of the of the of the opening kind of components. You don't need to read the, the whole thing, do you? Because you, when you're level one, all you need to ground yourself in is your level one mechanics. You know, don't try and run down like you know all rules one to twenty. You know, in terms of level, don't do it. Focus on level one and ground yourself, and you'll go you'll get on great guns. And then when you get to level two ground yourself in what you've just got but yeah very good for you know new classes to bring to the table brilliant job paizo super work hopefully you've enjoyed this video hopefully this has given you a good insight into these four new classes um again if there's a little bit more detail you want or you want to ask some questions um you know because the purpose of this review is to try and give you an idea of why it's worthwhile buying this book so that's why i'm trying to do these kind of good overviews so that you could have an, uh, an understanding of, of, of what content is in there. I can't cover all the content of each class because it's huge. It would be impossible. Uh, but if you have a couple of questions about a particular class, I've got the book. Fire them at me in the comments section. I'll let you know. Uh, I'll have a read and I'll get you some, um, some kind of actual answers. So hopefully this is kind of helping kind of shape your, your view on whether it's worth buying. I highly recommend it. I think it's a great book. Next one is going to be uh, the next video, uh, hopefully later this week, we'll touch stone on the existing core rulebook classes and the expansions with their feet pools, because, you know, I'm going to dabble into some of those. And then we're going to look at archetypes and then we're going to probably look at some spells uh, because there's, there's a lot in here. Um, so stick with the channel, like, subscribe. Thanks for all the new supporters. Really appreciate you guys. It's wonderful that you've come to the channel. Um, and yeah, let's keep talking Pathfinder 2E. Let's keep talking Advanced Players Guide. I'll, uh, well, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you on the next video, hopefully sooner rather than later. Peace out, take care, stay well.